So as promised, this is a quick video on building yourself a, a little charger for the CRZ nickel metal hydride um, battery setup for the IMA pack in the car. Now my car is in bits with the lithium in the back, so I can't show you the interior of my car, but this is a sort of very rough mock-up of a spare pack on the bench and what you'll be looking at. Um, before you start, you have to be careful. Okay, there are high voltages involved in the IMA pack. It's only about 120 volts absolute maximum, but but, you know it's still possible to give you a pretty nasty or lethal shock so first thing to wear is your rubber gloves okay so put your marigolds on before you start fiddling around with this and uh, it's also useful to have a tester multimeter if you've got one it's also useful to have something like that so with those precautions and um, sensible working practices uh, you should be fine okay so this is what the um, IMA battery looks like in the back once you've taken out the floor carpets etc and uh, basically we've got to get this cover off to get access to the points we need. Now I've got a couple of tools here. I've got a, um, a couple of trim tools and I've got a 10 mil socket etc. So you'll need a selection of bits and bobs uh, because you'll need to take a few things off. So the first thing to do is to take off the little cover here. There's a little cover over this switch hole here and this is the main IMA switch. Now this one's actually in the off position already but yours will be in the on position so flick it into the off position and there's also a bolt down here, uh, one of those, or there may even be a trim clip down there so you need to take those out and then you need to start taking the clips and the bolts out of the cover. There's two trim clips at the front here that clip onto the inside so you need to lever those out and once you've got all the club all the sort of um, bolts and securing parts off this um, you should then be able to hopefully remove this without having to take out the massive side trims in the car now you probably will need somebody to help you with this because you may well have to lift this up force this up a little bit because you've got to get this cover out from underneath here and uh, I'm hoping it's going to be possible. If it isn't possible under any circumstances, then then without removing this piece here, then you may have to do that. But at the moment, I think it probably will come out if you uh, uh, use a sort of su suitably subtle um, force, etc., to get that out. So let's assume that we've done that. So I'm going to take my cover off now. So I've managed to wiggle my cover off from out from underneath there. And now then we see um, the insides of the... Uh, IMA pack. Now okay there's normally another cover over this piece here I haven't got that little piece here it's in the other car um, but we're not interested in any of this under any of these covers here we're only interested in these bits at the side here and what we've got is we've got a couple of connections that we're going to need to use now down here you'll see this one here is uh, indicated as a negative I've put a little mark on there so that is the negative connection for the connections we're going to use and if we go over here there's another one here and that's the positive so that's the main positive of the battery and that's the main negative of the battery now they are um, not powered while the switch is in the off position okay if we turn the switch on then there will be a voltage between those two points and you can measure that with a multimeter if you wanted to if you wanted to check whether there was any power present at the moment you could do that now there shouldn't be with the switch in the off position so that's where we need to get access to. You don't need to take the pack out, you don't need to take those big bars off, you don't need to do any of that. You just need to get access to this point here, the positive, and this point here, the negative. So inside the pack, as you probably know, there are seven modules that look like this. Uh, there are six, of, six cells in each of these sticks, so there's 12 cells here in total, and we have, I think it's 84, if I remember correctly, in the CRZ. And these are all individual entities. Well, they're all made on the same production line to very close tolerances some um, sort of discrepancies will creep in over the life of the car they'll all age very slightly differently and um, they all sort of charge at very slightly different rates so eventually there may be some imbalance which develops which the car is not very good at correcting so what we're going to do is we're going to kind of correct the imbalance by applying a very low current charge to the cells or to the pack for an extended period and we're going to use two LED constant current power supplies uh, to do that. So I'll just show you these. So these are the two LED drivers that I've used here. And these are very cheap, available on eBay. You just get a couple of these and you wire the inputs from the mains in parallel. So it just plugs into your standard grid socket. And then the outputs you wire in series. 
So the positive of one, the output of one goes to the negative input of the other, and it comes out like that. So you end up with two connectors like this, and this is where you need these nice little insulated crocodile clips, because this is a dangerous high voltage output here. So obviously you don't plug this in at any time unless it's actually connected to the, uh, to the battery. So you just need those two little crocodile clips here. So let's connect it to the battery. So we take it over here, and put it over here. You can put it anywhere you like, really. So we're just going to connect the negative to there, like that. It doesn't have to be, there's only a very small amount of current, so it doesn't have to be very fancy. And we're going to put the positive down there. So there we are. So, I mean, you can connect them however you like, but basically you connect the negative to that one, the positive to that one, and then the LED drivers are ready to go. Now, what you would then do is that you would then plug it into the mains. Excuse me. So you plug it into the mains, and then you turn on the main switch. As soon as you turn on the main switch, then the voltage can flow through the pack, and it, you will get the nice low current charge that we're looking for. So you leave that on, basically, for at least 24 hours. Uh, it's a very low current charge and uh, that will then slowly gently balance the cells so we can just go back to our sticks on the bench here so let's imagine that this cell is nearly full and this cell is nearly empty which could be a scenario in the car and the car won't like that very much at all it will uh, the state of charge will go up and down very quickly and it will do lots of positive and negative recalibrations so if this one's nearly full we apply our low our gentle charge then what happens is when this one reaches full which it will do before this one which is nearly empty then it just slowly starts to gently heat and that's where the fan comes into play which we'll discuss in a minute well, so while this is all gently charging, this one is full, this one just gently heats, it doesn't overheat because the current is very low, just gently heats and converts the excess energy into heat, whereas this one, which is now catching up, playing catch up, is now slowly rising and eventually, after about 24 hours or so, this one will have caught up with this one and all the cells in the pack will all be balanced at about 100%. So that's the plan for the balancing. So. Because the pack is in this sort of like tightly um, constrained pack, what we need to do is we do need to have, think about a little bit about uh, cooling of the cells because they will gently warm. Now I did do some testing with this um, on the bench without any cooling at all and the temperature did rise and uh, it really does need some sort of little fan assisted cooling. Now obviously we have these two big vents here. This one is the uh, on the passenger side for a UK car. Uh, and that's behind the passenger seat and this one is the fan uh, inlet here now we're not going to use the OEM fan because you can't get access to that so what we're going to use is you're going to use the vent up here which looks like this so this is the vent behind uh, the either the driver or passenger seat depending on which country you're in so all we're going to do is we're going to blow some air in there now I'm using just a simple half amp 12 volt fan and you can power this from any sort of wall wart now you can buy these on Amazon for a few dollars so what you need to do is you need to fix it to there. Duct tape, whatever, you know, you fix it there, cable ties and block off all the other um, mesh outlets here and here. So that basically that can blow into there. And that, what that's gonna do is it's gonna force air down this channel here, through here, through the battery pack, out through the battery pack and out through the OEM fan. So that's all you need to do as far as cooling is concerned. And you should have cooling while you're charging um, all the time that the charger is active. You don't need cooling if you're discharging, but we'll come to that in a moment. But any time the vehicle is charging, you do need some very uh, gentle flow of air through the uh, battery pack, just to make sure the temperatures are nice and even, and it avoids any hot spots. Now, simple grid charging, which is just using the LED power supplies, which we've mentioned, okay, that may well do the job. But if it doesn't, uh, what you can try is if your pack is sort of in the last chance saloon and uh, simple charging hasn't really helped you very much is you can try cycling it. Now to cycle it you need a charger and you need a discharger. So we've got the charger as you've already seen. So the discharger can be something as simple as these two things here. Again you would use crocodile clips and the wire etc on these items here to discharge it. 
Now, personally, I prefer the bulb because it gives you a visual indication of when it's connected and when it's doing something. So obviously, if we connect this to the battery in exactly the same way as the charger is connected and you turn the main switch on, then this is going to light up and then this is burning off power from the battery and you just basically leave it connected until the battery goes out. Now, this is a 60 watt UK 240 volt bulb, but you need to just use the equivalent 60 watt bulb. For your own country now this is a 300 ohm resistor this is slightly different but slightly more subtle maybe slightly better but it doesn't have a visual indication of it's on so i it's potentially a bit more dangerous at least with this you can see if the lights on you know there's high voltage present um this um has a, is a fixed 300 ohm resistor so as the as the battery voltage fall the current that the uh, battery gives will go less and less and less whereas this um the bulbs have a slightly different operating principle they um their resistance is quite low as the uh, temperature of the bulb goes down and down so the current stay tends to stay more or less the same but with this the current will taper off um, so it's the choice is yours but i prefer bulbs it's simple you can get these 10 a penny at the uh, local store and uh, you can just do something like that it needs to be a 60 watt incandescent bulb so you would connect that in exactly the same way as you would connect the charger so obviously if you wanted to do a discharge what you do first is you do a charge first 24 hours then you would turn the pack off turn the charger off at the mains disconnect your two uh, leads here and put the charger aside then you would connect your bulb across the same two points here the negative over here and the positive here and then you would turn the main switch on and the bulb would light up and then you basically leave it until the bulb goes out and that could take 24 hours or it could take longer the longer it takes generally indicates the better your pack is because it means it's got more capacity um, so you would just do that now and then what you would do after you've charged it after you've discharged it sorry is you would turn the pack off again you would reconnect your charger you'd give it like a, an hour to restabilize and then you would turn the main switch back on and plug the charger in and charge it again for again a minimum of 24 to 30 hours give it another really nice charge after it's discharged and then basically you put the cover back on and uh, take the charger off obviously put the cover back on and reset the car and see how it goes you should notice a significant imp improvement and if you've got one of my obd2 cnc devices for the crz then uh, in due course you'll be able to reset the usable capacity which should reset your battery to as if it was new so you should then notice significantly better assist and regeneration duration and um, performance so that's basically it in a nutshell um, grid charging your ima pack your nickel metal hyma ima pack is not rocket science basically you need a bit of time you need some basic safety precautions your rubber gloves your multimeter to check things if you want to you need two led drivers uh, of this type here um, they're about uh, as i say only a few dollars on ebay and uh, they need to give an output of about 140 volts or so at uh, two, these are 280 milliamps about 250 milliamps or so you don't really want to be going more than about 300 milliamps uh, output otherwise that just increases the heating or heat that you waste inside the battery you need some of the insulated crocodile clips you need to disassemble the car sufficiently so you can get access to this part of the IMA pack. Remember, you're only interested in these two connections at the ends here, and the main switch is your friend. And then to make the discharger, as we've seen, you just need a light bulb or a 300 ohm resistor. And to provide the cooling for the battery while it's charging, you need to make something to hold this to this area here, and you need to fit some fans and block this area off apart from where the fan is blowing the air in now if you've got a smoke can you could put some smoke in the fan here it'll blow it in and then eventually you should see it come out of this end here uh, as it's passing through the battery pack so that's basically it you should notice significant improvement after you've done this procedure um, I did promise this video I'm sorry if it's a bit shaky the weather's not great here and it's pretty cold outside in the garage where I'm working at the moment so that's where we are uh, keep an eye on uh, my YouTube channel for updates. If you have any questions on this, then there is a thread on the CRZ uh, forum. You can post questions on there, but hopefully it's all fairly straightforward. Just take your time, be careful, wear your rubber gloves, check things with the meter, and uh, good luck with resurrecting your CRZ nickel metal hydride pack.